ability. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. This old world confusing me. Collective Youth family, welcome. Hope you're having a good night so far. Hey, we're gonna have some fun tonight. We got some short skits, uh, we got some worship. There's gonna be a message, which is by me. So it's gonna be amazing and informative. Uh, hanging out here, getting some sun. Any of you guys had some good times outside yet? Uh, I wanna make sure you guys are spending time outside. Uh, I'm trying to get as much sun as I can, you know, ward off any sad feelings and stuff. Um, hey. You guys want to see my house? Some of you guys have never seen my house. Some of you have never been to me and Kate's house. And I think we need to change that. We can't right now because of the COVID. Blah. But we're going to do an episode right here. Hey Murdoch. How's it going man? Look at that little guy just slinking around. Yeah we see you there. We see you. We're going to do an episode of MTV Cribs. That's right. MTV Cribs. It's gonna be fun. Come check this out. This is where I get my grill on. Mmm, tasty. Mmm, look at that. So appetizing. Here is a bicycle that used to have a bike seat until somebody stole it. Whoever stole my bike seat? No, no, no. Here is Katie's most recent project. It's amazing four dates, which we go on because we're married and it's super cool and it can go right outside over there. Best thing ever. He's outside right now being a rascal. Aren't you, bud? Aren't you a rascal? Look at this guy. Look at this precious little face. Yeah, he's up to no good. This is the front door right here to the casa. That's the paint from that project I was telling you about. Yeah, they used to be covered in spider webs and it scared me. Now, just happy door. Pro tip, hang all your sunglasses and keys on something like this. You never lose them again. This is where Murdoch hangs out quite a bit. It's a cat tree, super gross, covered in hair. And you guys eat taco salad? This is leftover taco salad. It's gross. That's my uh, J.R.R. Tolkien collection. That's my C.S. Lewis collection. Here, this is our fridge, super fun. Super, super fun. What is that? Evangel Church Kids for the win. This is my comic book collection. Nerd alert. My Christian heavy metal cassette tape collection. Super nerd alert. This is my complete nerd cave slash Katie's office during this time in the COVID life. This is where Katie spends all sorts of time every day surrounded by Spider-Man. This is a newspaper that I put in a frame from 1942. Look at that, boom, crazy. Get ready for the coolest thing you've ever seen. Get ready. The coolest thing ever. This is the coolest thing you've ever seen. Notice how we have no kitchen table. What is up? Instant kitchen table, whoa. My wife, Katie, many of you know her from such classics as youth group and being on her phone and being cold in a blanket and picking her nose. Such a cutie. Up the stairs, which are super gross. I keep seeing this theme about things being gross in our house. That wear all the time indoors and outdoors. Fun fact, you can wash these in the dishwasher. Show some love to the people out there. 
Katie decided to put this on the mirror so that we felt loved every morning. This is my bed where I sleep and take naps. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of MTV Cribs. And uh, yeah, we'll have you over sometime. We'll have you to our house one of these days when there's no more horrible coronavirus vibes. Let's get into the rest of our night.
Hey, Collective Youth family, hope you're having a good day. Uh, I am here on the roof at Evangel right now because, as I said before, uh, I want to be outside as much as I can be. Uh, I think it's such a helpful way to, you know, to keep your head in a good place, getting some fresh air, being out and about. Uh, I want you guys to know that I love you. And did you know that this is our last sermon in the Not Alone series? Not our last youth night, but it's our last sermon in the Not Alone series. And guess what? Next week, it is going to be fire, okay? Next week is Choose Your Own Adventure Night, okay? Now, what is that? That is a crazy, crazy game where you show up for the YouTube premiere like you're doing right now. Thanks for joining us. And you actually have to keep me alive throughout a series of different videos to get to the end to win. In the last video, there will be a link to a Zoom room, and I will be there, and I will know which one of you has won, okay? So if you win, good things are in store. <laughs> Here, let's pray. Let's pray, and let's get into our night tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that as uh, we look into the scriptures tonight, uh, and we begin to look into who you are as Father, Son, and Spirit, specifically the Holy Spirit. I pray that we would have insight and revelation uh, from you, Lord. And I pray that every teenager that listens to this, any person that's listening to this after the fact, would be encouraged today. I pray this in your name. Amen. So we talk a lot about the Holy Spirit in Pentecostal church and circles, right? Uh, and I want to encourage you guys that you're not alone. 
And the beautiful thing is that the Holy Spirit makes his dwelling place in us, okay? That's the first thing you need to understand about the Holy Spirit. He actually makes his home in us when we come to faith in Jesus. I preach that all day long, uh, and I think that will preach. (laughs) But the whole idea is that even if you feel like you're alone, the Holy Spirit is in you. If you are a believer in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. But that can be a little confusing sometimes because sometimes we don't feel the Holy Spirit in the way that we do at other times. Uh, Pastor Josh touched on this last week, uh, and he talked about how, you know, sometimes you'll be in a room full of people, and you'll be worshiping, and you're like, why aren't I feeling the Holy Spirit, or why am I not having that experience that my friend over there is having? That's what I want to get into today, and, and I think that there's some wisdom that comes from the Scriptures about the nature of the Holy Spirit, and, and who He is that's actually going to help us to better understand what's going on. Uh, in this reality, this experience of the Holy Spirit living inside of you and I, if you're a person of faith. We see in the scripture that the Holy Spirit is defined as the advocate. Uh, Crazy Greek word is parakletos. Uh, And it's like a legal word. It's like somebody who goes to bat for you, who's going to be like your defense and your defender before somebody or something. Um, And... uh, Not only is the Holy Spirit uh, an advocate that we have, but we read elsewhere in 1 John 2, verse 1, uh, that we actually have an advocate with the Father. uh, And that's Christ Jesus, right? Uh, And that's to do with sin, right? Like if we sin, we know that we have an advocate with the Father in Christ Jesus, We can have confidence in that. It's almost kind of like you got two people advocating for you. Uh, Notice how not only are you not alone with one person, with one friend, with one advocate, but you actually have two. You have Jesus and the Holy Spirit advocating on your behalf with God the Father. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that encouraging? I know when I discovered this and I looked at this, it it changed the way that I thought. Uh, It takes away some of the feelings of loneliness when we come to the realization that God is for us. So much so that he's got Jesus, Jesus is God, sitting at the right hand of the Father, uh, advocating on our behalf, and he sends us the Holy Spirit to live in us. And this is an encouraging thing. In John 14, 16, this is what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit. He says, I will ask the Father... And he will give you another helper to help you and be with you. Don't miss this. Be with you forever. Wow. Not only does Jesus say he'll never leave or forsake you, but he will send you the Holy Spirit to be with you forever. Uh, It's an eternal promise, uh, the Holy Spirit, right? It says in the word that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit uh, unto salvation, right? Jesus also promised to send the Holy Spirit. Uh, And when Jesus makes a promise, he makes good on his promise. Amen? We know this because he's good, right? And Jesus doesn't lie to you. I want to counteract this lie. Sometimes people think, well, like Jesus said this, but he's not going to do it. Uh, Jesus is no liar, right? C.S. Lewis said either he was a liar or a lunatic or he's the Lord, right? Jesus does not lie to you. If you haven't felt the presence of God in a while, don't think for a second it's because Jesus doesn't care or Jesus doesn't hear or he's unaware or he said he was never going to leave you but then did. That's not how he works. But we have this difficulty, don't we? Where we go, Jesus, like, I just don't feel you right now. Holy Spirit, I don't feel you. I want to posit something. We're going to keep this sermon short because I want to hammer this truth home, okay? And we're going to look around it and stuff as well. But uh, the Holy Spirit, he hasn't come just to make you feel good. He's come to comfort you. It says in the word that he's the comforter. But he isn't just here to make you feel good. A lot of times we reduce the presence of God to the way that it makes me feel. 
If I feel good, surely that's the presence of God. But there's more to the presence of God than just feeling good, right? It's not about the way I feel primarily. Uh, it's kind of like if, uh, if I have a friend, best friend of mine is my wife Katie. Uh, there's times where I feel really great being around Katie, and then there's times where she might be tickling me or chasing me or trying to wrestle me while I'm trying to have a nap, and I don't feel so good, you know, or, but it doesn't change the fact that she's present. It doesn't change the fact that maybe what's going on is not bad. The presence of God is not just about the feeling I get by him being there. See, we need to start looking at uh, what the Holy Spirit is actually here to produce, what he's here for. He has a reason. He's not just here for no reason. Uh, And he's not just here so that we can feel good. Uh, We see in the word that the Holy Spirit has come to equip the church uh, to do the work of the ministry, right? Like, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts with which to minister to the church uh, and to minister to people. Uh, And those gifts are bountiful. Maybe if the reason that you're not feeling so great about your relationship with God, uh, it might be good to look at what has he gifted you with? What has he gifted you with to use? And then to ask the question, am I using what he gave me? It's really hard to experience the presence of God if he's given me the gift uh, and the way to interact. It's like if the Holy Spirit came up to you and said, hey, do you want to play catch? Here, I got a football. I'm throwing you the football, but you never catch it. He just keeps throwing the football and you just keep refusing to catch it. It's like that. It might not feel like you're playing a game. It might not feel like you're having fun. But it's because you haven't stepped into that point of usage. It's not being reciprocated. Uh, I believe God is always trying to communicate with us, always trying to connect with us. And we just somehow keep missing it. There's also fruit. There's the fruit of the Spirit. You guys remember the song, maybe. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If I have no self-control in my life, if I'm completely unloving, uh, how am I going to be experiencing what the Holy Spirit has for me? Sometimes if, if we're going, I just don't feel you, Holy Spirit, we need to start looking at the fruit that he desires to produce in us. And And then if we don't actually see that fruit, if we don't see that we have love or joy or peace, maybe we need to start asking the Holy Spirit, why? Why why aren't I experiencing the fruit that you have for me? Because his presence will produce fruit. It's really important to take self-inventory. Like if I'm never concerned about how loving I am or how kind I am, I need to take inventory of that. That's something that I need to figure out. Another thing the Holy Spirit is here to do is to convict the world of sin. Well, like that doesn't sound very nice. Like the feeling of being convicted of sin, let me tell you, never feels good. (laughs) It, It is not a nice, pleasant feeling. Conviction is like being found out or, or being, being uh, brought to light. But the thing is, it doesn't stay feeling bad. It, it transforms, right? If you've ever been convicted by the Holy Spirit uh, and then you made a change for the better to do what he wanted you to do, like how many of us can say that that felt terrible afterwards, I'm willing to bet every single one of us can say it felt difficult at the beginning. See, if all we're about with the Holy Spirit is how he makes us feel, well, then we're not going to really be listening or aware of when he's actually convicting. It's a two-way street with this stuff. See, the Holy Spirit can convict us, But if we just, like Josh said last week, if we tune him out or we shut him out or we're not really listening, then we're going to miss out. We're not going to be experiencing the presence. What I'm trying to get at is the presence of God 
is bigger than we think it is. There's more to it than just having a good feeling in a worship service or having uh, uh, somebody pray for me uh, and, and me be encouraged. Those are good things. But that's not all that the Holy Spirit is here to do in the life of the believer. And don't think for a second that just because the world is weird right now because of COVID or a virus, don't think that the Holy Spirit's purpose has changed. We cannot reduce the presence of God, the manifest closeness of the Holy Spirit to feelings, guys. I love you guys. Let me pray for you. And we're going to just invite the Holy Spirit to do what he's come to do in our lives. If you would join with me, uh, maybe just close your eyes and we'll pray together. Holy Spirit, Lord, we know that we can pray to you, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we pray that uh, we would be aware, made aware, Lord, of the gifts that you've placed in us. Lord, that we would be uh, taking inventory of the fruit that you produce in us. And Lord, if we're not seeing fruit, Lord, I pray that we would draw near to you in your word, in prayer, and that we would look for the fruit that comes out. Uh, And Lord, if we need to be convicted of sin, Holy Spirit, I pray that we would not shut you out, that we would not close our ears, that we would listen to what you have to say, and that we would take action based on what you tell us. And we love you so much. And Lord, thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us forever. Thank you that you're not going anywhere, Holy Spirit. I feel the wind right now, and we know that one of the ways that you are described is like wind, Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would just blow, blow, Holy Spirit, over all of these students that are listening, that there would be a fresh wind, and that you would show yourself to them, Lord. Reveal yourself in power and love, maybe in the still small voice, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Love you guys. See you guys on the Zoom call later.